Now, how likely is that the government will respond to international pressure? Good evening. Uh, well, presidents don't really uh, pose uh, positive um, ambitions for, for the international community or for the Lebanese citizens protesting right now in the streets of Beirut, denouncing this government and the entire sectarian ruling elite. The issue is not uh, right now with the government as a whole. The issue mainly is with the prime minister of this government and the political players supporting this uh, prime minister, mainly Hezbollah, uh, the militia, and the president of the republic uh, and his political party. Uh, what they've tried to do in the past uh, few days, um, and this is an unfortunate narrative that they tried to propagate, uh, amongst uh, the Lebanese and the international uh, community is them wanting to capitalize on uh, the catastrophe that has struck Lebanon and the Lebanese citizens in order for it to become an opportunity for the rebuilding of Lebanon and what the pre president said, and I quote, an opportunity uh, to lift the embargo on Lebanon. To be quite honest, I don't see an embargo on Lebanon. I see a maximum pressure policy that has pursued a, a militia that has extensively um, uh, uh, has extensively operated in malicious activities in the region and no real sanctions or embargo is placed on Lebanon or in or its institutions but mainly on any entity that inv uh, that is involved with with Hezbollah mainly so uh, back to the issue I think uh, the pressure is rising from within the country and from the international community as well. What is positive is that we already have two ministers that resigned today from this government. There is one last minister who is considered the confidant of the current prime minister, and he has put his resignation uh, in um, in the prime minister's hand, who, hands, who refused to accept it so far and is still trying to conven convince him to retract it. If this minister, and his name is Demianus Qatar, if this minister uh, resigns, then the government is supposedly going to resign because this means the prime minister has lost his um, his mainly uh, allies within uh, within the government. So uh, the next few hours are going to be very intense and interesting at the same time. Bashar, we are looking uh, as we are talking, we are looking live pictures coming into us from Beirut. A lot of pressure from international community, but also a lot of pressure from the protesters. Again, they're back on the streets, uh, throwing stones, burning ministries, uh, government buildings. They want the entire government to step down. How many mi ministers need to step down for this uh, government to fall? A, a one third of, of ministers. Uh, I think right now we have an 18 uh, minister government. I'm sorry I, I, if I missed the number of, uh, or if I don't have it correctly, but one third of the ministers need to step down. Uh, so far, we only have uh, two ministers who, uh, who have resigned. A third one has resigned earlier, uh, even before the explosion. He is the minister of foreign affairs, but he was swiftly uh, replaced by a, a close confidant of the president and his political party. And even right now, we hear rumors that uh, the president and his political team are trying vehemently to replace the ministers that have uh, resigned so far because they seem to be uh, can, uh, very uh, they seem to be willing to fight hard for this government to stay because the uh, resignation of this government means one other nail in the coffin of this uh, alliance that brought uh, uh, Michel Aoun to the presidency it's an alliance with Hezbollah mainly and a, another nail in the coffin of the current uh, political sectarian ruling elite so uh, this, uh, the, this um, challenge is very well understood by the protesters in the streets. And uh, part of their rage and fury is directed directly on this uh, government, mainly because uh, in, uh, security reports have uh, clearly uh, said today or exposed or declared that the prime minister knew about the two, uh, 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate present in the, um, in the port. And uh, he, he didn't really act upon that. So he should be held responsible among also the other ruling elite in the country. Because mind you, it's not an issue simply of, of uh, uh, criminal negligence or of, of uh, mismanagement. This is the epitome of a failed state, of a failed sectarian ruling elite that has controlled the country for over 40 years, that have 
that has taken us to a civil war and that has invested in the blood of the Lebanese, in addition to it, stealing, literally stealing and robbing their money right, from right. Ba bank accounts. Bashar, so, but so look, the, yeah, Bashar, uh, let me just jump in here quickly. Look, you know, the main thing is now is, is to rebuild Beirut, to, to find a place to live for those homeless people. 300,000 people have been left homeless. So if this government resigns, who is going to handle all this? Who is going to handle this international aid coming in and follow the, the reconstruction process? Madam, the, the answer is already there. It's out there. President Macron, upon his visit to the country, made it clear that not a single cent or dollar is going to be channeled into the state's institutions. In addition to that, since the uh, explosion rocked Beirut and almost wiped out one quarter of the city, it, uh, it, like solidarity, civilian solidarity among the Lebanese citizens is the one that took initiative in the streets. You go down to the streets of Beirut, you don't see uh, public servants, you don't see security forces lifting rubble or aiding the Lebanese uh, citizens. You see only Lebanese citizens and movements that emanated from the protest uh, movement of October 17, creating networks and creating safe nets for, uh, for people who lost their, their loved ones, for people who uh, lost their houses, and they're trying to take things into their own hands. Bashar, this Bashar, but why we are seeing this pressure from, first of all, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron now? I mean, these people have been protesting for 10 months. These protests started in October. The government has been accused of negligence for several times now, for years. So why are we seeing the pressure now? when we've seen one of the biggest blasts that Beirut has ever seen on Tuesday and the, the half of the city has been destroyed. We're seeing this pressure now because the international community and mainly France has realized the hazard Lebanon poses on the entire region and possibly on the entire world. This is to start with. In addition to that, Le France has a special ties and influence in Lebanon that it doesn't want to see uh, wither away uh, given a new wave and a new generation is taking the streets, denouncing the political system set in place by the French, by the way, eh, almost 100 years ago. So there's a new wave on the, on the streets, new people, a new generation that want a different political system. And in order to avoid a complete meltdown of, of the country and possibly of the country becoming a, a platform for, for further hostility in the region and destabilization, a destabilizing factor, the international community is acting and uh, President Macron is possibly um, investing and taking opportunity of the current uh, situation as well. Uh, first of all, uh, to uh, re-engage with Lebanon, uh, a, a, um, a, French, um, um, a French protectorate to a certain extent previously, in addition to the fact that uh, the, everyone understands nowadays that the system in place has decayed, completely decayed, and a new system needs to take uh, shape and form. And we should not forget the elephant in the room, which is Hezbollah, the armed militia that is engaged in malicious activity around the region. And uh, leaving the country for its own fate is definitely a, a, a threat and a major risk on everyone. So it is in everyone's interest right now to engage with Lebanon, to engage with the people of Lebanon, with the people who took to the streets on October 17, denounced the entire sectarian ruling elite and is asking for a new future, a bright future away from the confessional system that has led to what it led. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. Bashar al-Halabi, I do appreciate your time for us here at TRT World. Thanks so much for that.